Hello and welcome back to Colouring with Kay. I hope you're all doing well. Thanks for visiting. So in today's video I wanted to um, do my very first flip through of the Mythographic Enchanted Castles colouring book. So I know that there are lots and lots of flip throughs of this colouring book on YouTube but um, I'm really really excited about this book and I really like the images and I've been waiting so long to get it and I wanted to do a flip through so it's of course called Mythographic Colour and Discover Enchanted Castles an artist colouring book of dreamy palaces and hidden objects so it's roughly um, similar size to the Joanna Basford books and it's got a lovely cover um, a lovely colourful colour uh, cover should I say and so let's get started with it. Um, so I want to probably sound off with some ideas of what, you know what I think I'll do um, with the pages. So I'm not one to really colour buildings. I'm not really into that. But this book's different because it has lots of other things, not just a building or a city scene. It's it's just got loads of other things. Um, in the picture which are really interesting so that's your um, title page with some uh, um, lots of different types of buildings here and castles and some flowers so this one here I really like and the chameleon here I can imagine doing that in lots of different colours and making it really bright and maybe a muted um, muted colours for the castle and then everything else around it um, like the flowers or the butterflies etc um, you know doing them really really colourful and maybe a really like a sunset sky or really colourful sky um, against a muted um, coloured castle um, this one I like and I really like this one as well with the hummingbird so I can see that being in blues um, greens maybe even purples and the flowers down here in reds um, yeah so that's a really nice picture and I know they've got hidden objects um, lots of different hidden objects in places There's an acorn there this picture now this is really really detailed these um, these windows here are mega detail. Now, for these detail bits, I think this book lends itself really well to using fine liners, but I wouldn't use alcohol fine liners uh, still. I'd, I'd use probably water based fine liners. So these are my Stedler Tri Plus um, fine liners, and they won't bleed, and I think they're perfect for. Um, you know the fine details in this book so I'd probably use them you could also have the Stabilo fine liners as well that will work well um, and yeah I mean every little tiny detail bit you might not want to colour and you might just go over it with pencil and some shading you might not define every little line but I really like these mushrooms here I can imagine doing them in lots of different colours um, this scene again, another underwater type scene with jellyfish. You can imagine doing the jellyfish in pinks and yellows. Um, or blues as well. Really nice. This could be a night scene. Well, it is a night scene, but um, you could have like a galaxy background there. And. Um, flowers down there I'd you know like to make them so they're really contrasted to the um, to the rest of the picture so yeah and then you could make all of these in lots of different bright colors against a black sky background but I can imagine using metallic paint you know on the stars and the on the moon and I like these details here so I can imagine making <laughs> making that in say you know shades of one color like blues so you could have the building actually in shades of one color you know this this bit I don't mean the building in the middle I mean these edges here you could have it in different shades of one color with fine liners and things 
and then a really colourful um, castle in the middle with all these domes and things against a black background. There's lots of possibilities. I really like this one and I think I might even start this one first, you know, with these planet scenes. I'm thinking of doing a galaxy background, so, um, you know, blacks, purples, blues and greens, and then you've got these things that come out here, which could be in other shades of colours to contrast. Really like that one. Uh, another underwater scene with, with fish. <laughs> There's a burger there as well. So when you colour this, you can just get lost in all the different things that you discover. These flowers, to me, um, just look like they should be pink. A bit like blossoms. They could be blossoms. <laughs> they probably are blossoms. Terrible at recognising things. This one I really like. Um, with the clocks and these cogs. I can you imagine doing those in, um, <coughs> excuse me, metallics? So lots of different metallics, be it gel, pen, because of, of course these are single sided, so you can really use what you like, um, you know, alcohol markers, etc. So yeah, I, I think metallics with for those. Um, would look nice. Another underwater scene, I really like this. I know detail is not everybody's thing, but I really like detail pictures. And I think in pencil as well, the shading in with detail pictures, I think they look they look outstanding. Um, you know, you don't have to use pencil for the whole picture, remember. You can use pencil for the, for the big areas, or oh, that's at least what I do. I use pencil for the large areas, so I've got the shading showing and maybe in the background as well, because you, you know, you can, if you want to speed it up and you're not the sort of person that wants to layer all the time, then you can use watercolour. Um, and then maybe add some depth, even more depth if you want with, you know, pencil on the edges. So that's that one. Um, this looks like another bit like a celestial one. I like this as well. I like these flowers in particular as well. They look a bit like daisies. Well, these look a bit like daisies as well, but they look really nice. You can just imagine doing these yellow for some reason. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd like to use, I, I don't know, gold, silvers. <coughs> Excuse me for this one. This one I really like as well with the butterflies. I can imagine doing the butterflies in lots of different bright colours and then against maybe a just like a non-shaded flat background colour. Uh, yeah. This one's got elephants in it. And I like these designs. Now they will probably take forever depending on how you want to colour them, whether you want to colour each individual bit, I probably wouldn't, but I'd probably use fine liners on those. Because there's not that much of a background, I'd probably use pencil with some blending for that. Um, this one, this one reminds me of a fairy tale scene, like this bridge here, and I don't know, this castle just reminds me of a fairy tale scene, and I really like the flowery border. Hmm, I could probably imagine doing this flowery border in shades of one colour and then I don't know about the castle make it make it I don't know pinks and blues and then of course the sun's there so you could make a nice little sunset background as well this is really nice as well um, the hourglass really looks nice. I can imagine using stickles on this, particularly on the bits that are dropping through. Um, so yeah, you could just go to town with all your media with this sort of stuff. There's just endless possibilities. Well, that was the next page. Yeah, it was. 
the paper's you know really good as well you know thick enough for you to be able to do things um this one is really detailed as well really nice another word that one looks like these look like hummingbirds again really like hummingbirds just so pretty um these bits here look like i don't know i'd use colors that you'd use for a for a burning fire so yellows oranges and reds that's how i see it anyway this one's really nice i really really like these flowers as well and the hair coming down really de detailed you can see here owls so that's like a like a bit like a reflection here isn't it <coughs> excuse me mm, that's quite nice as well just like the combination of the buildings, the flowers and all these other things um, gives you variety. Sometimes it is a bit difficult to see what bit is that and, you know, to make things out, but I, you know, you do the best you can. I like this as well with the Egyptian um, theme on it, the pyramids and everything and the palm trees here. You can imagine doing that in lots of different colours, I don't know, just making it really bright. The, the dragon one, that would be a nice one to do as well. And this bit down here with your blues and water, I can imagine using lots of gel pen, you know, glitter gel pen, etc. on these pages as well. Octopus, I think, or a squid, I'm not sure. Like I say, I don't really know my animals that well, but I know the basics of the safety pin there. I like this dragonfly one. I'd probably make all my dragonflies the same colour um, and try to contrast it with the building's colour. So I think in with these pictures, the, the more detail they are, if you, if you use a limited colour palette, I think that will look really nice as well. And even when you use... Um, lots of colours in one area I think that will make it look really really good as well but there's lots of pages here to experiment with I'm not so keen on the skulls I like this and I really like these these flowers as well how they come out at the top really really pretty daffodils Mm, that's quite nice. Um, rainbow, unicorn. You can imagine doing um, all the rainbow colours for that. Um, that looks like a bit of a waterfall there. Yeah, and a pond or a water feature. Magical one with rabbits. Yeah, like that as well. It's got the, sort of the, um, I don't know, the picture just shows a lot of movement with the swirly lines and the bird appears in flight. It's a, like an Aladdin's lamp there. Aladdin's lamp. Um, I like this one as well. Lots and lots of, it's like a forest here imagine lo using lots of different greens you know for the leaves here and try to make it tropical uh, like in a tropical forest so like I say the book is more than enchanted castles it's pretty much like different worlds this gives me these lanterns gives me like a wintry field with this these snowflakes you can imagine doing them in um, glitter gel pen you know the pen tool hybrids um the silver 
maybe even using two colours. air balloons butterflies again this one I find difficult a bit difficult to color I think because it, it looks really um, it's like a type of a three-dimensional one Look at the detail around this border. To me, that's just fine liners. Just completely use fine liners and maybe just to make it stand out a bit more um, black in the background bits here. So black background and lots of different colors um, with fine liner on the, on, on the actual detailed objects. nearly coming to the end now I hope I'm not boring you um, the lighthouse and lots of waves here that would be nice to do with the bluish background sky and then the rays of light coming out there oh yeah these are all perforated as well so you can take them out not that I would but it's an option so this is mega mega detailed mega detailed I'm not sure I'd attempt that anytime soon but it's there just in case um, one with bats I could imagine doing this in you know October time near Halloween yeah definitely with you know making it a little bit spooky using greys maybe greys blacks and muted colors and then we come to the hidden objects revealed pages which i won't bother going through so i hope you've enjoyed um my flip through of enchanted castles i know that there's lots of other flip throughs but i just wanted to go through uh, my copy and sort of share some ideas of how you know it could be colored um from my point of view so thanks for watching and see you next time